brothers by blood. That's how the South Korean president described the relationship between Seoul and Addis Ababa, referring to Ethiopia's role in dispatching troops to help out during the Korean War. It was the only African country to help a friend in need more than six decades ago. Since then, the friendship between the two countries has slowly but surely progressed. South Korea and Ethiopia, a special relationship dating back to the 1950s. Our news feature tonight with Oh Soo Young. Meet Addis Lulu, an Ethiopian student in chemical engineering who came to Korea two years ago. I've completed the Korean language program for one year. So now I'm attending my master's program. I was able to know that there was scholarship in Korea and I have always wanted to come to Korea because of my grandfather has a story with Korea. Lulu's grandfather was one of the 6,000 Ethiopian soldiers who fought with the South during the Korean War. Ethiopian Emperor Haile Selassie sympathized with Korea's ordeal under Japanese colonization and dispatched the Kagnu Infantry Battalion to support the South against the attacks from the Communist North. The Ethiopian soldiers fought 253 battles during the 1950-53 war. 121 soldiers died in the conflict, and more than 500 were injured. After the ceasefire in 1953, Ethiopia helped the South rebuild the country, providing medical support and welfare. To honour the veterans, Korea built a memorial centre in 1968. The centre, in the shape of three African huts, is on Ethiopia Road in Chuncheonghangundo province, close to where the troops had been based. Inside there are ornaments, medals and war recordings, as well as exquisite cultural artefacts. Across the street, there's a coffee shop that was also built in 1968 by a Korean couple who was greatly moved by the veterans' support. You can taste the fresh floral tones of Ethiopian coffee prepared the way you like it, from traditionally brewed to perhaps a latte. The family has kept the establishment alive with some of the finest Ethiopian coffee beans and traditional coffee roasting rites. The coffee house even had a visit from the Ethiopian emperor and since then it's become a place of pilgrimage for Ethiopian diplomats and travellers alike. They shed tears when they come remembering their emperor. Also, all kinds of diplomatic events and cultural exchanges with Ethiopia happen here at this coffee house. In the decades following the Korean War, Korea experienced a fast-track development and is now the world's 13th largest economy. It also transitioned from a recipient of official development assistance to a donor country in 2010, the first in the world to do so. Since 1991, Korea has been repaying Ethiopia's generosity with official development assistance. In terms of the budget supported, uh, Ethiopia is the largest beneficiary among the African countries. Quick uh, uh, touches upon the goals of areas of focus, uh, which are uh, health, education, rural development, public administration, uh, ICT, and other cross-sector issues uh, such as climate change and gender. Korean aid to Ethiopia has so far reached around 108 million US dollars, and this year there are 11 bilateral projects underway. Besides foreign aid, Korea also supports war veterans' descendants with academic scholarships for students in Ethiopia, funded by the Hatong County where the soldiers were based. Many of the veterans' grandchildren in Ethiopia couldn't afford to go to school, but now most of them do, and they even go to university with our full support. We've supported 177 students since 2009, from elementary school to university. Most of Ethiopians do appreciate that Koreans are helping, especially in the education sector. So it's, it's really good to know that Koreans are by our side. As the unique relationship of Korea and Ethiopia continues down the generations, President Park Geun-hye's visit is widely anticipated to strengthen relations, adding a brand new chapter to their story of friendship. Oh Soo-young, Arirang News.